Greetings everyone. In this video we're going to review the chaos game and study some of the variations that were investigated by some of my students. Uh, I want to quickly re remind you what the chaos game was and there's a whole video about this in an earlier section. Uh, imagine you have three uh, fixed targets. One imagine at the top of the y-axis here where the mouse is and then at the lower left and lower right and you start with any random location that you want and what you do is you randomly select a target to go towards and you go half the way towards there and then again you select from that new location another random target to go to and you repeat this process now when you do this only a few I don't know hundred times let's say 250 or so uh, you start seeing some pattern uh, that looks triangular and it might at this point start uh, reminding you of a shape that you've seen before in geometry but by the time you do this uh, a thousand plus times the pattern is unmistakable and I'll do this about 1600 times you get uh, the Sierpinski triangle uh, let's quickly review what the Sierpinski triangle is Sierpinski triangle is where you start with a uh, triangle it, can be equilateral even though you don't have to have it equilateral and then you remove the middle triangle that is designated in black color here and then at the next generation you repeat that again for the remaining three triangles you remove their middle triangles etc when you do this many many times you get a pattern uh, that is now very familiar called the Sierpinski triangle uh, investigated by the Polish mathematician Wawla Sierpinski at the turn of the uh, 20th century. You get a pattern which is uh, has all kinds of interesting properties such as self-similarity etc. Now observe this structure that we have created here is completely deterministic meaning there's a very specific algorithm uh, with predictable uh, results in achieving that. Um, and every time the algorithm repeats itself for the remaining parts of the triangle and it is completely predictable what you're going to get. Now what is surprising thus is that in a simulated randomized process you end up with this uh, shape again. Uh, this is something clearly to think about. Uh, we will not discuss the why of this in this video. Uh, but what I want to explore with you is some variations over this uh, theme that you could explore on your own once you become good at simulating the chaos game. The first variation uh, we want to simulate is what if, and let me just start this process again, what if uh, instead of approaching halfway towards a particular target, uh, what if you simulated uh, this game in such a way that you go 25% uh, towards the target? So let's actually uh, do this simulation here. When you do that, uh, let me just do this uh, maybe for about 500, 700, 800 cases. Uh, you start getting a pattern which is sort of filling the triangle and honestly this is what I would have expected from the original simulation. I would not have guessed that you're going to get that beautiful uh, delicate pattern of the Sierpinski triangle. So if the approachment ratio is 25 percent you get uh, this type of a filled uh, triangle and if the approachment ratio is even smaller uh, observe you get sort of some clustering um, around the original starting location. Now let's go in the other direction. If the approachment ratio is about 75% uh, or so, when you sample the cases observed, what's happening is the targets are beginning to attract the clusters of points. Uh, it might be a little bit clearer if we do this uh, around 65% or so. Uh, at 50%, it was perfectly the Sierpinski triangle and as you can see as you get that approachment ratio larger and larger the targets are beginning to attract these clusters of points which kind of makes sense uh, but uh, 
may not be obvious initially. Now, the next possible variation on the chaos game is if you change the number of targets that you have. We have originally three targets, but why it can't be four, five, six, and beyond? So here I'm going to show you the case with five. Uh, this was a, a total shock for me first time seeing it. And observe if the approachment ratio is, uh, it varies, you get all kinds of different results. But at a specific location here, uh, the approachment ratio is such that you get this delicate uh, version for the pentagonal case, very similar to the Sierpinski triangle. So here is a second variation in which uh, we change the number of targets from three to five. Uh, some students of mine did some further investigations of that. Uh, they wanted to start with the original uh, triangular uh, version, but in addition to having an approachment uh, ratio, they also wanted to have a rotation around the targets. So here I'm just going to uh, show you what happens when you change the uh, the angle at which uh, you're approaching the target. So here I believe uh, the approachment ratio is 0.5 and the approachment angle, so once you approach half the direction, to, uh, half the way towards your target, you do, I believe, a 180 degree or pi radian rotation here. But observe, you could change in this demo uh, the uh, rotation angle and you're gonna get all kinds of things and if I'm not mistaken at one point we should get the familiar and I'll just manually drive that so we don't have to wait uh, you should get the uh, famous Sierpinski triangle when the approachment ratio is a half however the angle is zero you don't do any rotation around the target uh, a student of mine who did this project, uh, when uh, we did the simulation and you get this uh, shape, he told me, and I think he was trying to give me a subliminal message, that it does look like an A+. And I had to agree with him that this work deserved an A+. Um, another variation, which is actually uh, very interesting here, is uh, you could imagine the chaos game played in three dimension, where the target, uh, the targets are on the vertices of a three dimensional object like a cube. Uh, here, I'm going to just run this demo uh, because one something is in three dimensions is easier to see. Here, you see. Uh, the chaos game played where the targets are on the vertices of a cube. Uh, in order to uh, facilitate this uh, graphing, uh, we had to create a three-dimensional interface for the software Fathom. Hey, by the way, all the uh, demos uh, that you see on this video have been created by Key Curriculum Press, uh, Geometry Sketchpad, and uh, Fathom. These are fabulous softwares that uh, you will enjoy uh, working with. Alrighty, so here are some variation ideas. Uh, after you uh, understand how to create the regular um, chaos game on scratch, uh, you're, you're welcome to explore uh, different uh, variations uh, in software such as Fathom. Uh, or even uh, you might be able to figure out how to do these things in Scratch. Alrighty, I hope uh, this was interesting and enjoyable. Um, uh, I hope to work with you in another video. Take care.